Okay, reigning Fortinet Cup champion and PGA Tour Canada Player of the Year, Will Bateman now joins us. Will, welcome back to GTC. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Okay, so three Corn Ferry Tour starts so far, two T4 finishes already. How about that start? What have been some of the major reasons for your early success? Uh, yeah, I think just, uh, you know, my mental game has been pretty strong this year. Um, for the most part so far, you know, obviously there was a missed cut in between there, which you didn't, didn't mention, but, <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, you know, I, I definitely feel like I'm pretty comfortable out here, um, for, you know, being pretty early in the season. I think that, uh, playing well last summer helped a ton and, and, uh, yeah, continue it to continue to play well. So this past week, one shot out of a playoff bogey on your last hole. Did you know where you stood on the 72nd hole and what you need to do? Yeah, yeah, I, I kind of glanced over at the board on 17 and saw the leaders were at three and, and I saw that Pearson was up there and, and I knew that he played, uh, I think like an hour before us. So so I kind of knew that he already posted three, um, but, you know, it wasn't really in my mind on 18 and I hit the same shot I hit all week on that hole and, and uh, just this time it clipped the tree and the trees are pretty tall there and it just knocked it down and and I had no shot to that back right pin from 200 yards. So, um, yeah, you know, it, you can look at it like, you know, you came up one shot short and you bogeyed 18. But, you know, the way I look at it is I, I played great last week and, and there was so much good stuff in there. And, and I made a couple really nice putts on the back nine to even put myself in that position. And uh, I know that I'm going to be better off from it. I think that uh, it's going to be that much sweeter when uh, I have another chance and, and, and I get it done. So. Yeah, that's that's the total right, you know, mindset to have, you know, to think of it from a positive side of things versus, hey, instead of bogeying the last hole, I, I played really well down the stretch. For those listening to this who, you know, maybe are just a casual weekend warrior or play two or three times a week when the season is there. Tell us, about, like, what, what kind of emotions are you feeling? Like, how nervous are you coming down the stretch on the back nine with so much on the line? Yeah, yeah. Um... To be honest, uh, like I said, I've been I've been relatively comfortable um, out there this year. I think that uh, you know being in being in contention in, in the Bahamas in the first event, I was definitely a whole lot more nervous than I was uh, this week. You know, coming down the back nine, I think putting myself there is definitely making me more comfortable. But you know, in the Bahamas, for example, um, you know, I was just I was just nervous the whole day. I mean, pretty much, and and. Uh, you know, obviously I played great that day. I, um, I shot 67, no bogeys, and and uh, it was just a really, really good day. Um, but yeah, you know, I feel like for me, just, you know, focusing on my breathing and, and just staying present and, and in the moment and, and not really making it as, as you know, as big of a deal as, as it is, is, has really helped me. And, and also not really focusing on the outcome for me. I think it's more of, um, you know, I'm just trying to hit every shot as best I can and, uh, you know, whatever happens from there will happen. Okay, so this week on the Corn Ferry Tour, you're currently in Colombia. How's prep going for the tournament this week? Yeah, it's awesome. I uh, I, I actually, I, I came here and walked inside the gates, and, I, and it really reminded me of Victoria, uh, British Columbia, at Uplands there. Um, the greens, greens are the same. They're POA, and uh, they're really quick POA. Um, and, you know, Victoria is one of the purest greens you ever putt on the climate's so good there and in bogota here we're at eight thousand feet so it's kind of perfect conditions for growing poa so i i really yeah just a lot of a lot of the similar vibes to to, to that course and uh yeah i mean the, the the venue's a treat and they're setting this place up uh firm and fast and looking forward to a great week wow that's pretty cool the comparison right there now this week they're also playing at a couple of courses so how's what's that like for you preparing to play two different courses for one tournament yeah, a little different uh, for me. Um, I, I did play the BMW uh, Corn Ferry event back in, I think it was 2016, which was three courses. So a little different prep. You obviously, you know, you, know, you want to see both courses. Um, so I played 18 today. I decided to take yesterday off, just uh, pretty tired, you know, from last week. Um, but yeah, so I played 18 today and then um, I'm playing a pro-am tomorrow morning at seven. It's 18 hole pro-am. So I'll get to see the, the other course. Um, but yeah, I mean, the prep, prep kind of is this, is the same. I think it's just, you know, obviously less golf on, on, uh, on both courses, but you know, the course is great. It's pretty much right in front of you. Um, 
there's one short course they call it and one long course. Um, but when you're at 8,000 feet, man, it, it's just, I mean, you're hitting seven irons, 200 yards. So um, it's going to be uh, going to be a lot of fun. So playing at 8,000 feet, like what kind of prep are you doing on the driving range? Like, do you have a track man out? Do you have any sort of device to say, you know what, I'm, I'm carrying each iron, you know, X yards farther, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, I did bring my track man this week, but, uh, I thought that my caddy and I did a lot of really good prep um, today. Just uh, so my range finder has um, altitude built oh. into it. Yeah. So basically we were just shooting numbers and then getting the raw numbers, which is basically back like in, you know, sea level, basically yeah. numbers. Mm -hmm. um, but we kind of figured it out to be, it's, it's, it's around 10% in the morning. And then as it heats up, it kind of gets to 12%. And a lot of the numbers, honestly, on the on the uh, the raw numbers at sea level, it was working out really well for me today. So I don't think I'm gonna. The, the range is super short this week. It's like 220 yards, I think, is the max. So I mean, you can't really hit much other than like a you know probably max hit like five or four irons out there. Yeah. But um, yeah, I felt like we did some good prep there, and uh, yeah, greens are good too. So. There you go. We're with Will Bateman, who already has two top four finishes on the Corn Ferry Tour so far this season. Now, given those finishes, have you already adjusted your goals for the remainder of the season? Uh, no, I think that, you know, my goals are the same. I I, um, I set all my goals like way prior to uh, coming out here and playing and and, uh, you know, they're, they're not going to change. I, you know, I'm still going to stay in the present and I'm still going to do my best on every shot and not going to get ahead of myself i know that there's lots of golf to play i mean obviously i got off to an amazing start which is it's great to be ahead of the eight ball um there's no doubt about that but you know like i said there's uh there's another i think i'm playing another 22 events out here so it's it's uh it's a long season so you just gotta you know i'm just gonna stay patient and uh focus on what i can control and uh, let the chips fall there you go. It's a really good mentality to have. Now, obviously, last year on Golf Talk Canada, we had you on after you won your tournaments. You won the PGA Tour Canada Player of the Year. But after that season wrapped up, you had a long off season. So how did you prepare and take all that time off and train yourself and get ready for this Corn Ferry Tour season? Uh, yeah. So, you know, the first, first month or so there, I, I, I just hung out, you know, I, uh, I definitely golfed with my friends and, and I was definitely working on my game here and there, but, uh, you know, I, I went out a little bit and, and had some fun and, and kind of soaked in the summer and, and stuff like that. And then, um, really started practicing hard kind of first week of December there, about a month, um, month leading up to, uh, Bahamas. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, just, I played a lot of golf, so I, I really like to play these days, um, kind of less practice and, you know, less wear and tear on the body. Um, so I played a lot of golf with my buddies, um, uh, in Scottsdale there. And, and then I played two prep events as well, um, which were just, they're just mini tour events in Scottsdale. Uh, it's called the Asher tour. Um, so I played a couple of those just to get some reps under my belt, um, leading up to this year. But, um, yeah, you know, obviously I, I went to the Bahamas with no expectation, you know, obviously, um, I love to play. So it was a really, really um, substantial break for me. I don't usually, you know, I usually play tournaments, you know, every month, every, you know, every couple of weeks. And to, to have that big break was, you know, it was a little tough. I, I went to the Bahamas and I was kind of like, you know, let's just feel it out and just kind of treat it as a kind of a preseason, you know, just feel it out. And then obviously, you know, played great. So that was nice. Yeah, was it ever? And, you know, part of having so much time off and having time to reassess, obviously, is, you know, whether you're making changes to your swing, making changes to your body. And, and this day and age, fitness and golf is obviously so crucial. How important is was fitness during your off season? And is it, is it now on a weekly basis, whether you're continuing to strengthen or maintain what you currently have? Yeah, um, I owe a lot to uh, to Greg McLean at uh, Premier Fitness Systems. He um, so I met him in in 2019. I I, I had, kind of was injured there um, for a good couple of years from 2017 to 2019. Um, just just some back issues and and uh, you know I'd go play golf and I'd be in pain. Yeah. Kind of after the round, but uh, meeting him was big just because uh, he's strengthened some things in my body and he's also got me a whole lot more mobile um which has been great and then you know we he's he's definitely set up uh, a really good program for me um prior to all my rounds uh so i do the same thing basically to warm up um every round um which which has been great um i never used to do that kind of as a kid you know as a kid you go out there and 
go hit some balls and you're ready to go type of thing. And, you know, I'm, I'm getting older. So, um, so that was good. And then, uh, yeah, on the road, uh, something that's changed the last little bit is just, uh, yoga. Ooh. Um, I've been doing kind of, I've been kind of doing a bunch of yoga lately. Um, and throughout the weeks, I'm kind of doing more yoga and, and, uh, just some prep just to, um, yeah, you know, just keep the body mobile and, and a little bit more, I'm a little more flexible in my hips. Um, as well, um, I'm doing a lot of a lot of hip stuff um, with the, with the yoga I'm doing. So I think that that's helping me out too. Awesome, yeah. I mean, the, obviously, the the physical strain of what you're doing is so important. But you mentioned this earlier, the mental side of things. You're breathing. I, I understand you do have a mental coach. Tell us about your relationship with Dr. Deborah Graham and how you guys connected and how vital that has been for you. Yeah, um, I mean. <sighs> I can't, uh, you know, thank her enough for, for everything that she's done for me. I, I feel like, you know, I, I met her as well as kind of around the same time met Greg in 2019 and, and we've done a lot of work, um, uh, mentally, the, you know, the last like two, three years. And then, you know, I, I lean on her during tournaments, um, in between tournaments before tournaments, um, all the time. And it's, it's been, uh, really nice that she's readily available kind of, you know, whenever I need to talk, she's, she's good to talk for, you know, 20, 30 minutes. And yeah, I think that it was just kind of about finding, you know, what, what works best for me. Um, Cause I, I know, you know, before, before I met her, I used to take thousands of swing videos of myself. I used to, you know, just a lot of different things that, that I used to do that I don't really do anymore. Um, and I'm more of a, you know, I feel like I'm more of like a, kind of an artist in a sense of like, I really like to hit golf shots over like over, over not, you know, over analyzing mm -hmm. kind of my golf swing. I don't know if that makes sense. And she's, yeah. she's really helped me there. And uh, like I said, I mean, I think she's been the, the, the massive difference for me. So you mentioned it earlier, you know, being positive, thinking, you know what, I, I putted really well on the back nine versus bogeying the last hole to finish T4. Is that what she's sort of working on with you in terms of the power of positive thinking or is it breathing or is it a combination of everything that I just said? Yeah, I think I think it's everything. Um, and, you know, I I kind of choose to live my life in a, in a positive kind of mindset. Um, you know, I'm out here playing golf for a living and and competing on, you know, one of the best tours in the world, arguably arguably the second best the second or third best tour yeah. in the world um, against some really good players. And, you know, I'm just grateful to be out here. And, and I feel like that helps too. Um, you know, there was times where I really didn't, you know, like to travel, didn't really love being on the road. And, you know, even coming here down here this week, I'm, I'm like, I love being on the road, you know? Um, and I, I really do enjoy the, um, the competitiveness of, of this tour and, you know, anywhere, anywhere you play, it's just it kind of, this is what I love to do. So I think it's, uh, that's it's been, it's been huge too. A couple of quick ones, quick ones before we let you go. You mentioned traveling there, you know, you're in Colombia right now. So are you, you know, slowly but surely getting into a routine of, you know, you go get your practice round in and get your yoga and your stretch, whatever, and then sort of figure out the rest of your day to get more comfortable because you are traveling. I would assume you're alone or do you have people traveling with you as well? Uh, yeah, well, the first uh, couple weeks I was traveling with my buddy Jeremy Paul and uh, Pat Flavin, yeah, uh, which has been good. We, we're uh, really good friends in Scottsdale, so it's nice to have buddies on the road. And then uh, for these two events, uh, those guys were traveling together, so my mom ended up coming down Nice um, for these two, and, and she likes to travel. And um, yeah, it's just been nice to, you know, just to have someone there, especially when you're in these South American countries. It's uh, It's good to have someone there, so. Yeah, a feeling of comfort there, especially having mom there. That, that's awesome, man. Okay, last one before you let you go. Obviously, I mentioned earlier, we had you on a couple times last year when you won on PGA Tour Canada, PGA Tour Canada Player of the Year. Given everything that happened last year, how thankful are you for PGA Tour Canada and your time you spent on that tour? Yeah, I really feel like, you know, I played a lot of events on that tour and it really helped me uh, learn how to travel and, and really be on the road. And, and you know, those are world-class events as well. And and I feel like they did such a good job this year with uh, um, lots of different courses and a lot of different challenges out there. And, and then, you know, obviously getting to the tour championship, it, that really felt like a really, really good tour event. Um, they set it up, up super well and, and, you know, crowds came out and, the course was set up really hard and, and yeah, I just feel like, you know, I'm very grateful for all those guys that, uh, that have helped out to, to make that tour what it is today. And, and, um, 
yeah, I owe, I owe a lot to them to, to be here today. Well, well, it's been a great start to your Corn Ferry Tour uh, career. Thanks for your time today. We'll have to have you on later this year. Not if you win, but when you win. Thanks for your time. Thanks so much, Adam.